My shadows are pretty much done, but that's only half of it. I still need to make lights. Here's how I did that. So I made two types of lights, which I called static and dynamic. The static lights are meant to be more performant while the dynamic lights have more features. Since they're closely related to my shadows, I'm going to give a brief explanation of my shadow map. I have a separate viewport that I use to draw the shadows. By default, it's black, and I draw the shadows on top using white. I use this viewport as a texture, and I assign it to six separate parallax layers, which means that they move at different rates when the camera moves, and that gives off a 3D effect. I have a shader on each layer that removes the black color so that only the shadows remain, and then, inside the shader, I change the color of the shadows. With this system, to make simple lights, all I had to do was add black shapes on top of the shadows, and they'd be removed by the shader, which creates holes in the shadows. This is the basis for how the static lights work. In the shadow viewport, I have a node dedicated to rendering the shadows. This node only draws once, since the shadows themselves won't change during the level. I have another node that's dedicated to drawing the static lights. This node draws every frame, since the static lights can move. The dynamic lights work a bit differently. Instead of drawing them directly onto the shadow viewport, I render them by passing their information into the shaders. At first, that information was just their position and size. I dilute through each position and remove all the color within each radius via the shader. I started to send individual light colors as well, to be used by the shader. I tested out different colors, but in the end I removed the colors altogether. I also experimented with different banding values. At first, each layer shared the same values, but it looked a little bit off, so now I handle banding by adjusting the light radius for each layer, which I think suits this game's art style much better. The style of banding was also implemented for the static lights. The main reason that I made dynamic lights was so that they could cast shadows. Writing the logic for shadow casting was definitely the hardest part of all of this. First, I would have to calculate all of the collision information for each dynamic light. I will look at the tiles within the radius of each light to find where the shadows would be. I represent the shadow data as arcs by using a star position, end position, and direction. This collision information gets sent with all the other light information to the shader. And since this version of Godot doesn't support shader arrays, I have to pack it all into a texture before I send it. Inside the shader, I render everything behind the arcs as shadows. Finally, I've combined the two lights into a single node with a toggle to switch between each type. 